Hey everybody, I'm out here in the rain in my car uh, doing some videos here instead of in my studio like I normally would do. It's just so nice out. I just wanted to comment a little bit on Tim Scott, uh, his rebuttal to Joe Biden, and the media's reaction to him, which is just classic. But before I get into that, please give me just 30 seconds to tell you about this special offer for my viewers. Did you know that collagen comes from the ancient Greek word for glue? This is because it acts as a glue between our cells and body's organs. The problem is our bodies don't produce unlimited amounts of collagen. This is why I highly recommend healthwithdronetech.com. This multi-collagen is a scientifically backed collection of the highest quality types of collagen our bodies need for thicker hair, more youthful skin, healthier nails, and pain-free joints. It's flavorless, odorless, and dissolves quickly. Get my favorite multi-collagen for 51% off today by going to www.healthwithdronetech.com. That's www.healthwithdronetech.com or by visiting the link below. Good evening, President Biden said to address a joint session of Congress, an historic night. Our ABC News coverage begins now. The president and his hope of an America returning to normal. I uh, attended a meeting with the president and some other TV journalists largely off the record today to talk about his what he wants to unveil tonight. But he seemed very relaxed, very confident, and, uh, and it's clear he's picking things that, that are popular. No uh, question. Big, big price tags, but popular. 25 years after Bill Clinton declared that the era of big government is over, President Biden will argue the opposite, saying that, quote, government still works. So far, because of the pandemic, and he's never used terms of victimization, he has been robbed of so much of the majesty and pomp of the job. His substance, very progressive, but what about his style? He's really trying to bring the country together. It was a make America feel good night. Nowhere do we need common ground more desperately than in our discussions of race. I have experienced the pain of discrimination. I've also experienced a different kind of intolerance. I get called Uncle Tom and the N-word by progressives, by liberals. Just last week, a national newspaper suggested my family's poverty was actually privilege because a relative owned land generations before my time. This was an extraordinarily partisan speech for Tim Scott. So in some ways, the speech kind of read to me or sounded to me like what any other generic Republican would say in this particular moment. He has a unique voice in the Republican Party. He's the only a black Republican in the United States Senate. It's actually, it's not necessarily true that it's not, it's not true. true. It's not true. It's just yeah, not true I, that states thing. like Georgia are not making it dip more difficult for people to vote. And, you know, by and large, those are people of color in those states. But he lost a lot of African-Americans by the tens of millions when he said America is not a racist nation. When you look at these numbers, when you look at these statistics, it is very clear that this country is, is, is uh, still struggling with racism. We still have racism showing up in almost every institution. This was standard Republican pabulum. This could have been delivered by Tom Cotton or Mike Lee. America is not a racist country. His audience to me appeared to be conservative, uh, white Republicans who are angry over certain things of cancel culture and the same sort of cultural nods that we hear on Fox News. I am I am shocked and a bit embarrassed for him. All right, so as you saw, Tim Scott had a pretty amazing rebuttal. I'm not a huge fan of Tim Scott or anything, uh, but I do think he he's a brave guy. He has some uh, uh, very intelligent things to say. I think he's on point. And he clearly triggers the Democrat state media, which is always a plus in my book. But he went out there and rightly rebutted Joe Biden for the nonsense that he spewed during his speech last night. And then, of course, you get the typical response from the Democrat state media. No critical look at Joe Biden. No, 
all you hear about Joe Biden in the media is, is, is applause and pats on the back for everything he said because he said all the things that the media class wants him to say. So then Tim Scott comes out and speaks for the rest of America, 75 million Americans, and I'm not really going to talk a whole lot about that, but I want to talk about the media reaction to that. It was ugly. Before we talk about that, I want you to remember back when Donald Trump was president, uh, way, way back when he was president, and he would criticize a black Democrat for something they said. Of course, Trump criticized everybody. He, d he clearly didn't care about what gender or skin color the person was. If he had a beef with them, he made it known. But what happened every time he did that? He, every time he did it, if it wasn't a white male, then the media would claim, oh, he's targeting women or he's targeting black people. For example, if if Donald Trump said anything about Maxine Waters, the media would then spin that as a sexist, racist attack. But of course, the media doesn't have to abide by that standard. It's different when the media does it. So, of course, we get disgusting reactions from CNN, MSNBC, and the like for Tim Scott's reaction to Biden's speech. Tim Scott uh, stepped outside what the media says black people are supposed to think, which just blows my mind. Literally going on the attack against anybody who steps outside that box. Like, that's their way of enforcing groups of people, basically corralling them into accepting certain political ideologies, certain political parties, by simply uh, shaming and attacking anybody who steps outside of that box. The Democrats and the media don't like that there are black people who disagree with the party, with the Democrat party. He's not attacking the country as systemically racist, a conspiracy theory that they can't prove, they can't point to anything, they can't point to a law that is racist, that is systemically racist. No, no, no. It's just this ghostly apparition that they never have, ever have to actually prove. When you look at policing, the fact of the matter is the number of unarmed people of black Black Americans shot by police is single digits. The number of black Americans shot and killed overall is just barely uh, uh, over 200. Whereas with white people, uh, the amount of white people killed by cops every year is over 400. Uh, and then, of course, they're going to talk about the, the percentages are higher per capita, but as we know, the percentages of uh, black Americans involved in violent crime and murder is also overrepresented. So, uh, and on top of that, uh, if you look at national crime surveys, uh, victim surveys, they correlate with the uh, arrest uh, data, which suggests that there is no widespread systemic racism against black Americans. There's some other reason for this. And, you know, I would obviously point to the higher disproportionate crime, but there's reasons for that. And we can talk about that. We can dig into it. I want to make it better. I want to fix it. But simply calling the country systemically racist and condemning uh, you know, white Americans or white America as being somehow complicit in this, unless we jump on board with this leftist cult, uh, that's wrong. And it's going to tear this country apart. The only people who benefit from that uh, going that direction is China. I don't know. Tim Scott almost looked like he may be thinking about running for president in 2024. So that would give us uh, right now, looking ahead to 2024, we have the possibilities of Tim Scott, Ron DeSantis and uh, Donald Trump. So let me know in the comments, who would you like to see run for president or what matchup would you like to see? Let me know in the comments what you all think. That's all I have for this one, folks. Please hit that like button, share it, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.